Hello again, good friends. Welcome, new subscribers. I'm Brian from Apex Detail. Today I'm restoring the paint on a 1968 Chevy Corvette Stingray. And I thought I would take you along for the ride, show you how I do it. There are many ways to remove oxidation, bring gloss and reflection uh, back from paint that's heavily damaged from UVA, UVB. There's a lot of dead or damaged paint molecules to remove. This is single stage lacquer. Some of it's original. Some of it has been repainted. So we want to restore the paint and leave as much material or paint behind as possible and that rule goes it doesn't matter if it's single stage or a clear coated finish all right the car has been cleaned properly clayed prepared we have everything taped off that we want to protect we have wheel covers on there and we're going to work a little bit backwards because i wanted to show you with this fender that there is a lot of gloss to be restored in this paint. Uh, I've done that in a little section of the fender here. So I'm going to go back to this uh, rear portion of the vehicle and tape off a test section and show you exactly how I get to that point. Okay guys, so we're just going to quick pause the video for a second so I can show you exactly what's going on and what our goal is. So we have the substrate here and with single stage you're going to have a primer layer and then the base coat, no clear coat whatsoever. And the first few microns are heavily damaged, dead, they need to be removed and we're going to shave it off. We're going to shave it off safely and responsibly and then polish to a fine gloss. And that's where I start with 3000 grit. Uh, a lot of detailers will... will Grab an aggressive compound and a pad and just start working that with a rotary or a polisher. And hey, whatever works for them, however they get results, that's perfectly fine. I like to grab the 3000 grit and work from there. If it's not enough, I'll adjust. Uh, if, it's, if it's plenty, sometimes I'll even go to four or 5000 grit just to make sure I'm not removing too much material. Then from there, I can go to a fine polish and bring out gloss, reflection, and refine it. That 3000 grit will come in the form of a 3-inch Trizac disc for me. Uh, I can attach it to my 3-inch foam palm sanding block. We're going to wet the substrate, we're going to wet the sanding block, and we're going to get going. It's going to be either you know short stabs, short strokes, or some longer strokes, as long as you have even uh, pressure on the sanding block. And we're going to have nice even pressure all the way up and down the substrate as we sand and remove all those dead molecules, uh, single stage paint. I'm gonna bring you in close. One thing I do wanna give you a tip, make sure there's either a constant flow of water um, coming down into the area so you can keep the sanding disc clean and perform uh, to top shape and it also keeps little nubules from forming in between the sanding disc and the substrate which which will cause some gouging or scuffing and you'll have to do more work when i remove or clean the area i keep an old terry cloth because at this point we're going to be doing correction afterwards anyways there's no risk of marring and you don't need to mess up your microfiber towels they can be expensive and they add up if you do a lot of work like this i keep a pile of old terry cloths around just for uh, this reason. And you can see all the dead paint here that's coming off has to be cleaned within every pass. Okay, I'm going to remove the masking tape and then give me a minute. I'm going to grab you guys, grab the camera, bring you in close and show you exactly what it should look like when the damage is removed 
and right before you can polish to refine and bring out the reflection. And as you can see, we're getting reflection from the work light. It's distorted because of the sand marks, but it's actually more reflection than what the substrate is giving us at this time. So I'm going to grab 3D AAT501, excellent for this next step. I'm going to apply it to just your standard cookie cutter orange foam cutting pad. Uh, and I have a bunch of these pads laying around that I use for single stage. Usually uh, pads that should be thrown away after a couple corrections, but I have a pile of them just for single stage here. You will go through a lot. And going through a lot of pads, I need to remind you, you need to clean them between every pass. Very, very important if you want the pad to stay effective because they clog up very quickly and very easily with both uh, single stage oxidation and clear coat oxidation for that matter. Another benefit of starting with just 3000 grit is you can polish out quickly and easily from there. I'm just going to do a crisscross pattern up and down, then left and right. The polishers on mid speed as I usually have between three and four and the pressure is like a firm handshake on the first pass and I'll lighten up and I always check after that up and down left and right pattern gives the, the panel a chance to cool down a bit and see where we are see what the progress is we don't need to overcorrect. and if I need to I can even go back to the 3000 grit and keep sanding and remove some more imperfections and oxidation if it's that bad if not, I can just keep on refining, bring out a finer polish and a, uh, a finer pad or a softer pad, and you can go as far as you want to when it comes to that. And I know you can start seeing the gloss and reflection coming back to the panel back here already. So if there's going to be a huge turnaround, no doubt about it. It just depends on what's underneath that oxidation. Sometimes there's staining that runs deep within the paint. Sometimes there's other blemishes to go after and remove. Uh, it's, it's really it's a crapshoot because you have to have a conversation with your customer that there could be stuff underneath the oxidation that's not visible until it's removed. Uh, it will not turn out absolutely perfect. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And you can see just after this little bit of time spent on this area, this is what we have already. And like I mentioned before, we can go back and refine this as needed. Uh, so I went ahead and corrected the whole lid back here. Um, and we're going to keep, we're going to continue this ritual, go all the way around the car and uh, see what we can get. And by the way, that doesn't mean that after the 3000 grit you have to stick to AAT and a foam pad. You can use whatever you want to bring out reflection. You can go with a polish, you can go with a microfiber, you can go with a wool pad. Whatever you find works for you on this vehicle. And I'll show you that difference right now as we go to the back quarter panel and we try to bring that out. And we'll again use the 3000 grit to remove the dead material the oxidized uh, paint and then we'll use a rotary with a cutting wool pad and maybe a different compound and I'll show you how that works. It doesn't take long for the dead oxidized paint to clog up either your sanding disc or even the foam pad. So while I'm sanding, you'll see me constantly spraying water or grabbing the terry towel to clean off the area so I can see what I'm doing and continue. And I'll bring you in close so you can see what it looks like after this step or this stage of the process. And to quick blindly throw together a combination, we'll use McGuire's D300 and a rotary with a, an Ardex wool pad, a lamb's wool pad, and we'll just continue with the process.
Okay, let me remove uh, what oxidation is left over there and grab the camera, bring you guys in close, and we can take a look at the gains we've made in this little section here. All right, so I went ahead and removed all the oxidation from the rear quarter panel here, and we're looking good. It just needs refinement, a very fine polish, and a fine pad, and we're ready for protection. Another successful combination would be the EX0406 by Sonax which is very similar to the perfect finish and I'll team that up with a polishing microfiber pad. The polishing microfiber pads are usually um, layered with black foam in between the microfiber and the base layer, the velcro layer itself. I have that attached to the 3 inch Flex XFE80 3 inch polisher and that will help me get the tighter spots, the curvy areas, Yet another excellent combination is the Sonax cut and finish. I'll team that up with a foam pad on the two inch pneumatic polisher. We'll get down here around the vents and also some of the emblems that I didn't remove. Uh, a lot of them removed. I chose to keep two of them on that were a little suspicious uh, with the attachments on the other side. So we'll just polish around them and make do. Piece of cake, guys. Um, that's how you remove heavy oxidation. You can put together any combination you want after the wet sanding step. So I captured a couple pictures here. The car was released, went home, and entered a King Frost Parade and did very well. Brian from Apex Detail, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. I love working on these older vehicles. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate.